You ever wondered what's inside one of these? We're gonna show you. A few days ago, we had the opportunity to go visit Ben at American Pressure to learn about the inner workings of a pump. Here we have a triplex pump. And now would this be, let's start with the basics. Is this a direct drive or would you mount it for a belt drive? This would be a belt drive in most cases. It's got this pulley coming out or this shaft coming out. So you put a pulley on that and then it'll be spun that way. And okay. you use the word triplex. Um, you know, that's referring to three plungers. That's where the word triplex comes from. Okay. And now what are the components inside here? So these are, they're pistons, right? So this is kind of like an engine. So yep. can you explain some of the mechanics? Like how does this thing work? So when you think of a triplex pump, don't think of one pump, think of three pumps built into one. So there's three individual pumps in this pump. Each one will have an inlet and an outlet check valve. So when this cylinder pulls back, it pulls water in from the inlet check valve, which you really can't see in this cutaway, but it looks like this. So it'll pull water in through the bottom seat. And then when it pushes forward, that water goes out through the top. So water comes in the bottom and pushes out through the top. It's a very simple motion. And this connecting rod here pulls a ceramic plunger back, pulls water in, pushes water out. And so you have that happening one, two, three times, thus triplex. This is called a positive displacement pump too, meaning the faster you spin it, the more volume you get, the slower you spin it, the less you get. So if it pumps four gallons a minute at 1,000 RPMs, you go down to 500 RPMs, it'll pump about two gallons a minute. And it doesn't care uh, exactly, I mean, there'd be a little bit of difference, but it really doesn't care if you're running at 5,000 PSI or at 300 PSI, the volume's gonna be close to consistent. Now, as far as some of the components here, um, let's start maybe at the back of the pump. So you've got this big space here. Is that mm -hmm. just an air gap or why would, what is this area for? So this is normally filled up with oil to about this level and then that's gonna lubricate. As the oil lubricates, it keeps all these components where there's load uh, from burning themselves up from friction. Um, one thing we just talked about, the check valves. If you've got a stuck check valve, then there's always load on this plunger in one cylinder. So it never has, it doesn't have the same motion, so it doesn't lubricate well. So if you have a stuck check valve, you can actually take out the oil end of your pump because the connecting rod here isn't having the spacing it wants for load. It doesn't want to be under load when it's pulling backwards to lubricate properly. But then you've got the shaft in here, which will, which will time these three. So they're going forwards and backwards, you know, you know, with each other, so you've got the pump moving, moving the water you do. Oil bath halfway up, keeps everything lubricated, and then you get into uh, this part right here, which is the first area where you might start to see something. If you've got an oil leak, there's a chance your oil seal's bad. The oil seal serves to keep oil into the pump. A lot of people think if you get water in your oil from the pump, you need to replace the oil seals. Not true. The oil is kept in by the oil seal, and that's really its only purpose. Now this is a vented dip cap here. If you don't have a vented dip cap and you just leave the shipping plug in, then as the pump warms up, you build a little bit of pressure and you can pop the oil seals out and do damage there. Get an oil leak and have to do some maintenance. So make sure you pay attention. There's a few pumps out there that don't require venting, but they've got a different oil seal that's designed for it. Um, then we get into the other components here. This one's called a flinger washer. Um, as the name suggests, it flings. So if you've got a drip of water that gets through the seals back into this area close to the oil seal, this flings the water away from that oil seal to help prevent water from getting into the oil. Water gets into the oil, the oil is contaminated, things don't last like they should. As you get more and more water in the oil, it's worse and worse. The oil will turn milky colored, it'll look thick. Um, so the flinger washer does that. Then we've got the ceramic plunger here. It's a special grade ceramic that's a nice smooth surface and that handles loads very well. And then here we've got what's often called seals or a packing stack or there's a lot of different names used but that refers to this right here. That's specifically designed for a pump so that when the pump head is on tight it's loaded meaning it's kind of squeezed down and everything kind of hugs the way it's supposed to to seal. You've got low pressure seals, you've got high pressure seals and you know when you've got 4,000 PSI over here on this side of that seal, you don't want uh, the water shooting backwards here, you want it to go where it's pumped. So 
that's the basic component. You've got um, seal materials in the packing stack that space out the seals. There's restop rings. There's different names, head rings for a lot of these things. But basically, that's what's keeping your water where you want it. The plunger is moving the water by pulling it in, pushing it out, and the check valve is, is keeping it going the direction you want it. So a lot of people are afraid of pressure washer pumps. You don't necessarily have to be. They're fairly simple, but you also want to be careful when you're servicing them that you know what you're doing, you're trained, you've got the right parts, and you're identifying the problem correctly. So when you think the pump's the problem, if you've got a bad unloader, uh, you could have another issue. So you always want to consult uh, your manuals and so forth when you're doing work. So I see here that these two are not lined up. Why is that? Yeah, because one of them's pulling in water, one of them's pushing out. So this one looks like it's at the forward part of the stroke. And as this one's going to come back and forth, so they're going to kind of work in this action. Then you put the third one in there. I don't have three hands, so I can't show you how that works. But you put the third one in there, and then they, you, get a, you get flow, flow, flow out of each one. And you get, it's not a perfectly smooth flow, but you get a smoother flow as you have more cylinders. An old duplex pump, which you really don't see anymore, just had two plungers, and those were more like a chugga 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 chug because they'd always kind of you hit, miss, hit, miss, hit, miss, just with the nature of it. So that third cylinder gives you more smoothness in the triplex pump. And if you were thinking about it in, what is that, trigonometry, where you've got sine waves, you've got three sine waves simultaneously, so it smooths out the spray pattern, I believe. Correct. Yep. And the vibrations. The right? sine wave is an accurate way to, to kind of look at the, the movement, and then you get a start to that stroke in the sine wave where it's compressing and decompressing, and then you get a little bit of, uh, it doesn't perfectly follow a sine wave as you overlap them, mm -hmm. but um, when you look at supplying a pump like this with water, let's say you're pumping at five gallons a minute. Well, the pump's not pumping five gallons a minute instantaneously. It's pumping seven and a half, two and a half, seven and a half, two and a half, seven and a half, two and a half. Mm. So your water supply, if you gave it a perfect five gallons a minute, would be lacking and undersized. So you need to actually supply a pump with more water than you're putting out or in, in some fashion. Interesting. Okay, this is my last question, I promise. No, when ask we talked as about <laughs> When we talked about, um, you know, the difference between a, a, a belt drive or a direct drive where you're installing it, we were saying that the belt drive would potentially be for something like a, a bit larger, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, a bit larger unit where uh, you have maybe a shorter or longer stroke. So how long is this stroke that actually produces that volume of water? I mean, it doesn't look like much space there. You know, without a sticker on the top of this pump, we've got a 20 millimeter bore. So that's our, that's our diameter, there's 20 millimeters. And this is probably a 16 millimeter stroke pump. So it's gonna move 16 millimeters back and forth. And that can produce, all three of those going together can produce between two and seven gallons a minute, if this was that. Yep, up, size. down, up, down, up, yep. down, up, down. Yep, so this, this pump would probably you know what, a thousand RPMs produce four gallons a minute, roughly. Mm -hmm.